Observe a classroom and it's hard to immediately pick out the gifted. Teenagers are, after all, teenagers preparing for life after high school. If you tell them where you're coming from and what you already know, they don't have to spend time covering that. But in this class, there is someone who defines unique simply by the feat he accomplished. Joel Knighton is a good student. Very good. I know you've heard that before, but have you heard this? He registered a perfect score on both his ACT and his SAT tests. It's exciting, but at the same time, you kind of have to remind yourself not to make too big a deal out of it, because it's, it's really nice that it opens those doors, but at the same time, you have to remember that you still have to go through them. Not exactly a surprise for those that have taught him. It needed to fit the sentence grammatically, and it also needed to be in the same context. Very bright student. The nice thing about Joel is um, he's one of those that probably knows, knows it all, but doesn't act like a know-it-all. Melanie Peeper tagged along. So, you know, I've been able to follow you through some of your school day, and I've seen that some of your teachers are just great, you know, and, and with the standardized tests, it's all about what you've learned and, and building on your entire education. Do you feel like having such great teachers has helped you in that way? Uh, definitely. I mean, you have a lot of people who talk about how great it is to have like a, a new high school or like a big high school, but I think at the end of the day, what really matters is the people who are in it. So I've been able to have some time talking with Joel and he just seems like the nicest kid. Tell me what it's like to have a student like this in your school. Well, Joel represents uh, a lot of really nice kids at Coon Rapids High School. and. And I think it's kind of amazing that somebody who's had the success he's had academically, um, that his family can be equally as proud of the way he's viewed by his colleagues and teachers in the building. And, and that's a person with no pretense. He's just a really nice person who wants to help others. But still, he did what only three students did nationally, take the test that helps define opportunities in the future and ace them. The ACT I was pretty comfortable the whole time. The SAT I was a little more worried just because they break it up into more sections. So you're kind of always feeling time crunched because no one section is longer than 25 or 30 minutes. Well, the tests are extremely hard because some states actually use the ACT test to distinguish and to award scholarships in the state. So the tests are, are very difficult and they're meant to both predict college success as well as really distinguish between the very top students in the nation. This is Rare Air, the elite of the academic elite. How he does it can only be partially explained. Part gift, part passion. I think Joel takes learning very seriously. Um, he doesn't just take for granted that he's intelligent. He works at it. He does extremely well in English. Um, he's very articulate. His writing is just wonderful. It's, it's hard to teach him something that he doesn't already know, but uh, there are a few moments when those opportunities arise and they're great moments. To understand all of that and make it make sense is a task. So For Joel, that about love of science results? has taken him to the science fair the where he learned more about Relative what is actually out the there. There's a lot more monolithic and the kind of thing you'll remember because these you go there and you meet 3,000, 4,000 students from all around the world ages 15 to 18 about and many of these people have committed nine ten months to this project and some of them this is the third or fourth year they've been working on the same project he speaks french and plays the violin but you sense his downtime brings him back to what he loves learning and trying to learn something new i'm a reader i like to read a lot and even though I'm not necessarily working right now, I work with computer science and software engineering and programming stuff, and I really like the ideas of open source software and sharing those achievements because I really think that's something that's important to do academically. So I like to work with that and computers a lot in my free time. Are you involved in any other things that go on here at school? Um, I'm on the speech team and the knowledgeable team and in French club and National Honor Society. So in addition to your classes, that keeps you pretty busy? Yeah, pretty busy. Trying to be just another kid who happens to have an aptitude and an appetite for education that is off the charts. What class are you going to be going to? What books are we going to be taking? Um, I'm going to CIS Economics next. So I already have the book in my backpack from the U actually, and it's a brand new book, which is really nice that we just got this year from uh, Paul Krugman, who won the Nobel Prize, so that's kind of cool. And um, 
that's about all I've got for the rest of the day of Independence Study, fifth period. He's beginning to understand the future is bright, probably still not aware of how he has separated himself from the field. But more importantly, in his mind, it's not what he knows or what he's done. It's that every day he wants to do more. It's that he has a desire to find out what he does not yet know. And that, to Joel, is what really makes life fun. I definitely want to continue my education for a long time and get that undergrad and get that graduate and likely get that PhD. But at the same time, I think when you're doing something like math, you risk kind of getting lost in academics. And while I want to stay in, in academics as opposed to other, other private industries, I'd really like to be able to make some of those mathematical advances that do have concrete positive effects. So I don't know what those are going to be yet, but that's what I'd like to end up doing. You know, every year we, we have students, all of our students we miss, I'm, but, but um, some of them have left a little bit of a mark on the school that makes the school a better place, and Joel will be one of those kind of people that we'll miss. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.